Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video I will try to create an expert advisor based on a Gartley price pattern. You can see the pattern that I'm talking about on my screen because I have already found an image of it. So let's check it. So this is a bullish Gartley price pattern. There is also a bearish price pattern uh, which is basically an upside down version of this of this pattern right here. So what we can see uh, is that this pattern consists of four legs. So the first leg is X to A, the second leg is A to B, the third leg is B to C, and the fourth and the last leg is C to D. And then also we can see that there are some uh, relations uh, or there are some, how to say it, there are some, yeah, I think uh, uh, relations is a good word for it between each of those points. Okay, so there is some specific length between uh, X and D, for example, or B and D, and yeah, so it's not that simple. So um, the first step of this tutorial will be to, to create this or uh, to create a function that will be able to detect this price pattern and after that we will discuss ways of how we can trade it. So uh, I've seen some podcasts and I interviews on YouTube with some institutional traders and one of them said that Gartley patterns are very very powerful tool. And that's why I am just trying, trying this EA. So let's get to it. So I have already prepared some of my code, okay? Because I think that uh, this tutorial won't be uh, that short because detecting Gartley's won't be an easy process. So I, so I already started. So what I've done here is that first of all, I have imported or included this trade function or sorry, not function trade class, which is basically used for opening positions, uh, which we have to do in an expert advisor. Then I've also uh, specified the uh, resource. Yeah. A resource indicator and in this case it's a zigzag indicator because if you go back here you can see that we are basically working with highs and lows and for this the zigzag indicator is just a perfect uh, perfect perfect indicator then i've created this handle which is basically used for storing the zigzag indicator as you can see right here okay um, as an input parameters for the zigzag indicator i've used the Initial settings, yeah. So the initial settings are 12, 5, 3. And once uh, I'm finished with the, um, the detection function, yeah, I can create these as an inputs right here. I have also declared these ask and bid variables uh, just to get the, the latest ask and bid price, which will be crucial when opening buy and sell positions. So then uh, let's move down here because this is basically what is interesting. Uh, yeah, so I have coded this get zigzag values. So this is a function which basically loops through the zigzag indicator and it collects a specific number of values from it. Uh, this integer variable look for basically specifies for how many values are we looking for. So in this case, we need five zigzag values. Uh, this can be changed, of course. Then I have this temporary double array in which I store the temporary zigzag value, as you will see in a moment. Then I have this double zigzag values array in which I store all of uh, those zigzag values that I find. So let's check uh, what's inside this function. So we declare two integer variables. The first one is found, which basically keeps track of number of, of zigzag values that I've already found. And the second is k. So k variable is used for iteration. So that's that. Then we have this while loop. So the condition uh, for this while loop is found is lower than look for, okay? so. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but basically if you are looking for five values, we want to stop 
this, uh, we want to stop this while loop once we have found five values. So that's why this condition is here. So then on this while loop, the first thing is that we get a specific zigzag value, okay, at position k. So that's why we have this iteration function, uh, iteration integer, because basically with every iteration, we want to go backwards in time. So then we have this one zigzag value and we store it into the temporary array, which was defined right here. And then we have this if else statement. So if temporary, uh, uh, adapted, uh, temporary array at position zero is not equal to zero, therefore there is either high or low, we store this uh, value, zigzag value into the zigzag values array for uh, this specific index. And then we increase the found variable by one. And also with each iteration, we increase the k variable by one. So that's pretty simple. So let's go back here. Uh, yeah, also one more thing. In order for this to work, I have ha I had to resize the zigzag values array to the size of look for uh, integer variable. Yeah, so if we are looking for five, uh, values, then the zigzag values array has to have a size of five. So that's that. So then we have this on tick function. So on tick function, I have specified my uh, standard static integer last bar and integer bars variables. So this is just to make sure that I am not collecting zigzag values on every single tick. So using zigzag a zigzag indicator on its own can be pretty uh, taxing uh, for the EA itself because it's not simple to iterate through all of those v values every tick. So uh, because I want my EA to work faster, I just uh, request zigzag values once every new uh, candlestick. Yeah. And I just forgot one thing, I have to always update the last bar variable. And then, uh, yeah, that's, that's all, that's what I uh, got so far. Okay, so now what I will do is that I will just display the zigzag values so we can check if we are, if we have correct zigzag values and then we can discuss uh, those functions in in which we will basically detect the, the Gartley patterns. So let's create string text equal to um, empty, empty text and for i uh, integer i is equal to zero, i is lower than look for and i plus plus text plus equals new line of code, uh, new line of text and plus zigzag values at position y. And here we will comment out the text. So let's just check it. So I'll go back here and I will click on start and this is what we have. So let's check the values. So we should start with this value right here. So this is, this is not all right because we should start with this value. So we have already found <laughs> one error. So let me just go back here and Okay, let uh, let's leave it like this for now and I will deal with that later. Okay. So let's check it. So this is the current value, which is approximately 1.07967. And its value, it's right here, which is the same. I don't know if it's that visible on your screen because it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be pretty small, but it's the same value. So the second value is 107847, which is the same. And therefore we can say that the rest will be the same as well. Okay, so that's perfect. So we have succeeded with getting the zigzag values. So now we can move on to the, let's say, 
boolean find bullish gartley okay so this is going to be our detection function okay and we'll create a boolean variable called found okay so this will basically tell us whether we found a gartley pattern or not and by by default is going to be equal to false and then we will just return the found variable at the end of the function so now let's discuss let's go back here and let's discuss what we will do okay so there are four legs okay so one two three and four and five data points or five values so this is the first value second third fourth and fifth so we have five values so this is perfect because now we will use all of them uh, in order to detect the Gartley pattern so there will be two steps basically in this function so the first step is to check the the order of these uh, of these values okay so we for example want to say something like x is lower than d d is lower than b b is lower than c and a is higher than c and you get the idea of what i mean yeah so basically we want to check the order and uh, the relation between each of those points so this is going to be the first step and the second step is to check these distances and ratios so it that's that step is going to be a little bit more difficult but i'm sure we will figure it out so let's do it okay so now what we will do is that we will We will do something like this. So let's call this first. So this is going to be so the first is going to be our day D. So yeah. Then second will be C, third will be B, and so on. Because I think with these names it will be a li little bit easier like to follow the process. Yeah. So zigzag values zero. So now what I can do is that I can just Take this, so first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And now let's just change these names. So second, third, fourth, and fifth. And I'll just change these values in here. Three and four. Okay, so this should be enough for now. Later in the function, when we basically check these ratios and the lengths and distances, we also we will also work with the size of these legs so basically i think we can uh, we, i think we can create these as well so let's do it so let's say double first or leg one okay so leg one will be d to c or from c to d okay like two is going to be c to b and so on yeah so if you want to get like one we need to do second and minus the first then we want to get like two which will be second minus the third okay then like three which will be fourth minus the third and like four which will be four minus the fifth so this should be okay so let's proceed so now we will create a boolean variable next one let's call it first step okay it should be equal to false so basically in this boolean variable we will store a boolean so true or false value uh, which will be tied to the order or yeah to the order of these points so now we want to check whether the a is higher than x 
B is lower than A, A is higher than C, C is higher than B, and D is higher than X, but D is lower than B. Okay, so something like this. So this is what this first step OK will be for. So let's try to get all of these conditions right. So what we can do now is that I can do something like this. So now it will be a little bit, yeah, but you have my webcam right here, right? So let's just change this. Okay, so now hopefully you can see both the code and the Gartley. After I uh, have this first condition uh, done, I will just zoom in on this so, so, so you can see it clearly. So let's start. So obviously the first thing we want to check is, so let's start with the basics, okay? So if first is below second, and uh, second is higher than third, and fourth is higher than third, and fifth is below the fourth. Okay, so now we basically get the right order, yeah? So this is the first thing we need to do, and the second thing is if. And now we basically want to check the the position of them okay so if fifth is below the first so, so now we are checking d and x and let's say third is higher than uh, first so now we are checking d and b okay and mm -mm. Mm, yeah, fourth is higher than second. So now we are checking A and C, okay? And I think by default, this should give us all of, or this should cover uh, the rest of it, I guess. Because if fifth is below the first and the third is higher than the first, so basically these are the lows, Therefore, this it discovers the lows, basically, and then fourth is higher than second, this covers the highs, so this should be okay. So if we have something like this, we can say, we have a Gartley, bullish, Gartley. Okay, so this is perfect. So now we don't care about, about these uh, ratios, yeah, we just care about the order. So, and we can say something like first step is equal to true. So now we have our first step, okay. So now the second step, okay. So now the second step, so I will create second step, okay, which will be equal to false. And now let's check it. So this might be a little bit more difficult to visualize, but I'm sure that we will find a way of how to de detect this. Okay, so let's just follow these guidelines, let's say. Okay, so let's start with the D. So this is the first line we want to check. So firstly, we have to work with uh, the length of the, the length of the A and X, so of the fourth leg, then we need this value for A and value for D. So basically what you will do is that you will take the this value right here, so price for A, and we will subtract from it uh, this length times this number right here, which basically basically gives us the price where the D should be. But of course, the markets are not perfect, therefore we have to leave some deviation from this number, okay? So let's do something like this. So if, uh, so fourth, or if first is higher than fourth, 
Now we have this uh, like four times. And let's go for z 0 0.8. Okay, so, so we will 8 to something like this. So we will leave a room for an error in there. Okay, so this is basically checking the first and then also first is lower than four minus like four times 0 0.73 something like this okay okay so this should be so this this should basically cover the sorry not this this should cover this relation yeah this distance or this angle let's say so now we have to deal with b to d and a to c so let's start with a to c because this will be basically the same thing so what you want to do and here also it gives us basically the deviation okay so this is a good thing because we can use the these values so now so if so the same thing so this is for the second so second is higher than fourth minus and once again like four times and now 0 0.886 okay and second is below four minus like four times 0 0.336 i guess let's check it 382 okay so if both of these conditions are true then basically this uh, relation is okay as well and now there is this last one so b to d okay so now we have to check the distance from a to b which is basically third leg and then the distance i think it would help us yeah what we will do is that we will also check the distance from a to d and then we will basically use these numbers to check if these two points are uh, are okay let's say yeah so we will do double let's call it like like x x because like it's not defined in there this is just like an artificial like let's say so it's going to be fourth minus the first so this basically gives us the length from going uh, from a to d perfect so let's check it so if and now so if the first is so basically it, the logic is the same what we will what we try to do is that we try to set some price boundaries or deviations and that and the d price level has to be inside those those boundaries yeah so the lower boundary is basically a to b times one uh, one point six one eight or do we I I think we didn't need this like X so let's just see so if first is higher than four minus the like yeah we didn't need it like three times one point six one eight and first is below the fourth minus like three is it like one two yeah like three times one two two seven two so if all these things are correct then 
second step okay is equal to true basically yeah very very simple so this was pretty difficult to be honest and we are at 25 minutes which is okay so this was pretty difficult and pretty exhausting but I think we didn't or I that I did not make any error in here like we will check it now but I think it should be okay so found is equal to uh, first step okay and second step okay okay so this is this is pretty simple so uh, how to check this I guess that we can visualize the Gartley. I don't know how much time it will take, but I guess that we can... Or we can at least like do a rectangle in which the Gartley is. I think that makes sense. So let's do it. Okay, so let's do if found. Okay, so we will create a rectangle. So it will be easier, like it will be easier than recreating every line of the Gartley and uh, connecting them together. But it will also give us a nice visualization of the Gartley. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's give it a name. So name. Sorry, I have a turtle there and. Yeah, okay. So name is equal to Gartley plus, let's say, something unique. So time current, okay. So time current is unique enough. So this is going to be our name. So now we will object create zero, name, object rectangle, and now, yeah, zero. And now we need four parameters time one. Price one, time two, price two. So we have time, we have time two and price two and price one. What we are missing is time one. So time one is basically the initial time of the Gartley. Okay, so it's like where it started. So for this, we have to little bit change the get zigzag values function or not change, but add something to it, and we will say indexes so in the indexes you will basically store the number yeah we will basically store the index of the zigzag value let's say if that makes sense i think it does but if it does not i'm sorry so indexes i will just uh, resize yeah, this is okay. This is the error for that function that is not finished. So let's do indexes found is equal to k. So this should do it. So now uh, I time symbol period current and now it's indexes at position four. Yeah, because we start at zero now. Uh, yeah, this is it. Is it okay? Yeah, this should be okay. So now we want to get the highest and the lowest price. So by definition, if we are correct, we can see that the highest price is A and the lowest price is X. So let's start with the fifth and then I time symbol period current index is zero, which is basically the most a recent index okay and the same thing but for fourth okay so this should create a Gartley now of course there is going to be there are going to be two issues so the first issue is that if we execute this function on every tick it will basically detect the Gartley on every tick for that specific candlestick therefore there, there will be too many objects so what, what we will do is that I will run this function also only once per every bar so how was it called find bullish Gartley so this should be okay 
And then the second thing, which will be an issue as well, is that is let's try this. But I think because we are using the current zigzag value, that there will be an issue. So let's just check it and let's see what we will get from this because it's possible that we won't get anything basically. And so far it seems like we are not <laughs> getting any guard lease. Okay, so there are two, two things that could have happened. So the first thing is that obviously my conditions are not correct. Yeah, and therefore we don't have any signals. And the second uh, possible reason for this is that uh, those deviations that we set are just too tight, okay? Because this is a perfect example of the Gartley, but you will <laughs> never have a Gartley like this in the, in the real market. So what I will do is that I will just check for the first step, okay? Okay, I will now delete the second step, with, which basically checks the, uh, the ratios between uh, each of those points. And I will all only go for the first step. So let's try it. Yeah, so perfect. So you can see, and this is what I was talking about is that, uh, yeah. So yeah, so <laughs> there are two things. So the first thing is, what is a good thing is that the reason why we didn't get any Gartley's before is that those deviations were just too tight. So we have to um, create bigger deviations. And the second thing is that, as I said, it will uh, repaint itself because we are using the current zigzag value. So that's why this happens. So let's, let's change this basically. Let's change this. Okay, so how to change this? So basically, we don't want to... Uh, like there are multiple ways to change this, but basically what you want to do is that you want to avoid the firstly found value. Okay, so we basically want to be storing the values inside the zigzag values array and the indexes array starting from the second found zigzag value. Okay, so we basically want to leave out the first one. So yeah, sorry. So how to, how to do this? Uh, we can either collect all of those so we can change the look for for six and then just remove the first one should we do that let's try that maybe it's going to be the most simple thing to do but array remove so zigzag values start one count one array remove let's try this one like i'm not sure if it will work because uh, yeah, I don't use this too often. Like I know how it works, but I am not sure if it will fix. Yeah, and we have array out of range 37. So 47, yeah, so this is just for the commenting. So this should be okay if we delete this. And also we can just 56 as well so we have error at 56 so let's check it and if it would be too much trouble then 56 zigzag values found temporary array yeah because yeah so okay so this should be just too much of a trouble because with every array remove we basically change the size of the array therefore it works for the first iteration but for the second one it does not we could basically like just call this piece of code before every while loop but i think it would just slow down the ea because yeah 
now you can see that it works perfectly because uh, we changed that. So basically, at this time, at this, because we are looking back, so at this time we would get this guardly pattern. And now let's check if this is correct guardly pattern, and then we can deal with all of those other issues. Okay, so by, by definition, just remember now, now that we are not checking the, the, the ratios be, uh, basically between those points, we just check which point is higher or lower. So let's check it right here. So lowest point is X, which is correct. Highest point is A, which is correct. B is higher than D, which is correct. And C is higher than both of these, which is correct. So this is perfect Gartley pattern. Uh, based on our conditions. So yeah, this is the same thing. So lowest, highest, higher than these two, sorry, higher than these two, which is correct. And this is higher than this one. Okay, so we got the order of those points uh, right. So that's a good thing. So not, now let's work with those deviations. So this is where the issue is. So let me just do something like, let's just increase these deviations by a lot. Okay, so now we are just doing 0 0.9 and 0 0.65. Here we can do something like 0 0.9 and 0 0.3. And here we can do something like, I don't know, uh, let's go with 1.8 and 1.1. Let's try this, okay? Maybe it will fix the issue, but yeah, obviously there will be like um, a trade-off between accuracy and number of guardlies. Yeah, because... Uh, okay, so now we can see that it works because we got this guardly, which to be honest, which looks pretty pretty nice because if we like get this picture right here and this one, this is the perfect Gartley, this is our Gartley, we can see like that it looks nice. Yeah, so why not? But as we can see, we get only one Gartley. Okay, we only get one Gartley right here. So, yeah, so first and second Gartley and that's third Gartley, fourth Gartley. Okay, so it's not that bad, yeah? Increasing these deviations helped this, but this is not something we can build an EA around because it generated four entries, let's say, yeah? Four, four Gartleys equals four entries, and four, uh, four, four entries are just four entries. So this is not something we can build an EA around. Okay, so we can obviously increase these deviations. Yeah, but I'm not sure if by increasing these deviations more, like if the Gartley has the same effect, okay? Because there's obviously some logic behind these deviations. And if we just set these de deviations too high, the Gartley pattern could lose its functionality, let's say. Yeah, so it, that's a good question, like how to go about this. But yeah, fuck it, oh, we can increase this. So 1.2, and let's go 4, the same thing, 1.2, and let's go 1. And I think this should be, let's go 0 0.5 and 2 here too. Okay, because it's, it's also possible that, for example, because we have three conditions right here, it's possible that one of these conditions filters out most of those Gartleys and the two other conditions are relatively okay. So that's possible as well and it would be worth it to, uh, it, it will be worth to like examine and get the idea of which conditions filters how many Gartleys, but now we can see that we get more Gartleys, obviously, okay? so. Let's go with this setting. Let's just check. 39, this is still okay. We have one hour for this. Okay, so now we coded the find bullish Gartley. So I think it will be best 
to continue uh, like now we will progress to opening positions based on guard like yeah we could go to the find downside uh, uh downside guard as well but is it the same guard like you just uh you just change the, the direction basically yeah and it wouldn't be that uh, that interesting so now how can we trade a Gartley? so that's a good question how do we trade a Gartley? I will create one more object here okay an arrow which basically will show us at which point we detect the Gartley because if you remember basically we are checking previous price okay and so there will be some deviation from the Gartle pattern and our current time. So if I visualize this, let's say that for trading it will be extremely, uh, extremely um, important to know whether we detect this Gartle, for example, at this point or somewhere here, or if we are able to detect it somewhere at this point okay because as we can obviously see at this point it's it's too it's um, too late okay so we want to detect the gartley as soon as possible so to check this i will just create object create zero name plus let's add uh, an arrow text object arrow up zero time current and let's do i close symbol period current and zero okay so now it will also show us an arrow uh, which will be which will be placed to the current time yeah so this is it here we can see it and it's nice so basically for this gartley right here we detect the Gartley at this point okay so this is our first bar with the arrow so basically with this deviation we are able to detect the Gartley which is pretty nice and also there's an error because yeah we should only generate one arrow uh, which means that we are repainting these rectangles as well so let's change this so very simple so static uh, double last fifth is equal to zero if last fifth is equal to um, zigzag values four then uh, return and last fifth is equal to zigzag values four so this is just like uh, just simple check and return false because we have boolean function so now it should only display one arrow okay so by doing this i just messed up the whole function uh i'm just getting tired sorry so so why 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 last fifth Okay, let's leave this out and let's just continue. So now let's discuss how to trade the Gartleys. Okay, so how to trade it? So for bullish Gartley, the basic idea is that, for example, for this one, we wait for the price to go above this price level right here. And when it does, yeah, then we open buy position. For uh, the bearish Gartley, it's the same thing. We just wait for the price to uh, to break low and then we sell if we go back and we check another Gartley somewhere for example here so for example in this case this would be a perfect example because this is our entry level as you can see the arrow appears, appears on this candlestick therefore it appears before we trade this level and you would open by this position and the price would go up 
So for example, in this case, we would open by this position. In this, in this case, we would lose this position. But that's how you trade the guard lease. So let's let's continue. So I will create static double variable, yeah, called by entry price is equal to zero. And what we will do is that we will just simply say, so if we found a guard lead, then by entry price is equal to the first, so the, to the second. Okay, so now we store the price which has to be broken in order to open by position. Okay, so now let's create a new function called entry, so by entry function. Yeah, by entry function and in here you will code everything okay so let's continue so the first thing we need to get the close price so i close is equal to the symbol period current and let's go for shift of one so we always want to wait for the candlestick to to finish and then uh, then we will open that position i have also forgot one thing i have to get the latest ask price so in symbol info double and latest bid price because without them i would not be able to open positions like in this case i, I only need symbol ask price since i'm only opening by positions but yeah we can uh, import both of them like this perfect so uh sorry typo so close so now what we also want to do is that we just want to check whether we are not opening multiple positions at the same price level so static double last entry level is equal to zero so if close is higher than <coughs> by entry price and last entry level is not equal to by entry price then last enterprise equal to buy enterprise and uh, we we want to open by position very simple so let's do that so trade buy so now volume let's sell, sell 0 0.1 symbol current symbol price ask price and let's do well it might be also interesting like to incorporate the gartley in finding uh, take profits and stop losses so if we look at this, what we can, for example, do, so if we enter at this price, we can set stop loss at X and we can set take profit at A. This might be interesting, so let's do that. So buy entry price and then buy take profit price and buy stop loss price, okay? So now let's update these values. So buy take profit price is equal to fourth sorry and buy stop loss price is equal to uh, 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 fifth perfect so now we can just use this in order to yeah so this should be okay so let's go here and let's just call this so buy enter function so now this will be very interesting so let's check it does it open positions or not okay so it does open positions it does open positions so here we can see that basically <laughs> there's nothing wrong about this yeah but like we can feel that for example in this case this is not a valid entry why like it it is valid entry because if you check it this is our entry level and it enters exactly at this price level but the thing is that it just takes too long okay like the cartly pattern should tell us where the where the price will go okay but based on this Gartley pattern, the price should go up, but it went down. Therefore, this is not a valid signal because it does not, uh, it does not basically, it, this is just a pure luck, let's say. Yeah, because it's not tied to this Gartley pattern. 
On the other hand, this is something that I like to see because this is exactly what we are waiting for. So basically this is our entry level. We enter at this point and we go for this take profit, which is nice. Okay, so this is basically what we are looking for. But this, this is not something we want to do. The same thing is right here. Like this is, this is something that I would say that it's okay because basically the price didn't move uh, down, okay? So basically it stayed sideways and then it went up. So maybe this should be, this could be a legitimate price pattern, Gartley, but it's questionable, that's for sure. And then the price take profit is right here, which corresponds with the highest point. So besides, uh, besides this issue that I, explained on this example for the guard list, I think it works pretty pretty well. So let's deal with this. What we can also say is something like if the price, so firstly we have to determine what means that the guard list is no longer active, let's say, or yeah. I think price going below the lowest price, uh, lowest point of the Gartley could indicate that the car that the Gartley is not active. Okay, so let's incorporate that. So let's go here, and we can do something like uh, 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 so. If close is below, now. We know that buy stop loss price basically is the same thing as the lowest guardless point. So if this is the case, then buy entry price is equal to close because like we can set something like this, just high number, but we can say close because then, then we check if close is higher than buy entry price, which will never be because we just set it to the close price. So this should take the care this should take care of the problem. And does it? Or does it not? So uh, let's go back to our where is the example right here? Okay, so the Okay, so somehow, maybe this is not an effective thing to do. So let's set this to zero and let's say, and by entry price is not equal to zero, something like this. I'll, let's try this uh, condition. Okay, so, This looks this looks pretty nice. Okay, so far I don't see anything that would violate this condition. So here it's pretty close, but you can see that the lowest point of Gartley is below this low, so the Gartley is still effective, and also the the entry came before that, so that's okay. In this case, also okay. So this is going to be also interesting. So this is questionable, but since we are checking only closing prices, so these are low prices, these lows are created of low prices, but not closed prices. Basically, we don't uh, we don't de deactivate this Gartley and this is our entry, which is based on our condition. So yeah, I am pretty happy with this. So I guess this will be enough for this video. Of course, there's much more to do with guard lease. And you can see that this works really nicely. So we can test this for now. Of course, the guard lease, yeah, this is not bad. Like without any optimization or anything like that, it's not bad. So let me just share uh, some of my thoughts with you. So of course, there's much more to do with guard lease. Uh, for example, we have not implemented the downside Gartley, which would double the number of positions. So that's the first thing. The second thing, we can 
always use features like break even, trailing stop, time filter. We can uh, we can use we can test different approaches to the take profit and stop loss because why? Uh, like we don't know if the way we implement the take profit, take profit and stop loss is the best way to implement it overall. So there's just so many things we can do. But I think this video was a good example of how to how to implement something more complex than just simple price patterns. Uh, also, you can see that this version of Gartley obviously generates. Uh, not very high number of positions. Yeah, this is six years, and we had one hundred six <laughs> positions, which is quite low. And it's fifty minute time frame. So if we change this to five minute time frame, it will increase. But of course, as we know, with lower time frames, the accuracy goes down as well. But this is something that might work. Uh, with with proper proper features let's say yeah okay so uh, this will be it for this video uh, thank you for your patience in the first um, case yeah because it wasn't easy to to create something like this so thank you for your patience and for your time and i will see you in the next video in which I will maybe finish this EA. So I will add the downside Gartley and I will add trailing stop, break even, and all of these features to try to upgrade the performance. So, yeah, once again, thank you very much and yeah, have a nice day. Bye.